I made it my New Year's resolution to read my books, which isn't going to be a problem, but I'm quite a slow reader. Just before Christmas, I went into Waterstones and they kind of had like this festive table there, and there was a book on there that I really got drawn to, and that book was called Christmas at Tiffany's. Now I expect this just to be like a very light-hearted read that would get me in the mood for Christmas. What I got out with this book was so much more. It's like 570 pages long, and the synopsis of it is it basically follows this girl called Cassie, who on her 10th wedding anniversary finds out some news that kind of changes her life forever. To put it that dramatically. Ah, drama. She has these three best friends that kind of all live very different lives to her. And they all kind of decide that she hasn't experienced enough, so they all individually take her in into their cities and transform her into their little prodigy version of what she should be like in the city that she's living in with them. So she goes on these adventures in New York, Paris and London, and we get introduced to so many different characters that and many that become so lovable and some that we don't like so much. That even I find myself wanting to live in New York working in the fashion industry and I don't know a single thing about fashion. <laughs> to me this book was never dull. As soon as I thought I knew where it was going or where there was a set destination, there was like this small plot twist in it that kind of changed the whole scenario and I was just left then having to rethink well what was going to happen which kept me reading and just hooked on this book for ages just wanting to know the answers and it kept me like this right up until the end which I think is part of the reason why I love this book so much because it wasn't until like the, the end chapter that I knew what was going to happen after all and I feel like I got all my questions answered at the end as well which a lot of books don't actually do I just end up sitting there like, well, wh what happened? This book kind of explained it to me, which, thank you, Cameron Swan. You did a very good job. I, I would easily highly recommend this book, even though it's not Christmas anymore. Christmas is just a day, and if you want to experience London, Paris, or New York in writing, Cameron Swan sets a seat like perfectly. I've never been to Paris, yet I ended up dreaming about the scenarios that Cameron Swan wrote about because I f felt like I knew what Paris looked like from these descriptions in here. Four for you, Karen Swan. You've got Karen Swan. The next book that I am going to be reading is Divergent. Divergent? Don't know how to pronounce the name here. I, it's the first book that I've ever been bought without me asking for it from a friend. So thank you so much, that meant a lot, because that's a new thing for me. And it's also part of a series. And I've never read a series of books before. So I'm very excited about that as well. If you've read this book, let me know if it's any good. Please don't spoil it. And if you haven't read it but want to, start reading it and then we can discuss it when I've finished. And you'll know what I think of it next. Don't forget to subscribe. Say two. Take two. Don't forget to subscribe to Lucy Victoria. There was a sentence in this book said by the character Cloud. Or Claude however you want to pronounce it, that kind of hit me hard. It's... I had become immersed in misery for so long that misery itself had become my pleasure. It was all I knew how to be.